What does a beautiful future look like to you? You can flip a negative mood on its head. This was a talk that was all over the place, but then New York, you are all over the place. There are experiences that you just don't get anywhere else. Hello, everyone. I'm Jessica Shaw. I'm host of EW Live on Sirius XM. I am so excited to be here to speak with the incredible cast and director of Apple's critically acclaimed espionage thriller Tehran on behalf of 92Y. As of course, you know, the season finale of this incredible, suspenseful, stressful series is available today on Apple TV Plus in more than one 100 countries. If you did not set your alarm for the second that this show was available, I don't know what's wrong with you, but I promise you it will leave you wanting more. Tehran is, of course, from lauded Fauda writer Moshe Zander, and it immediately oh, just hooks you in within the first scene into this fictional portrayal of Mossad agent extraordinaire Tamar Rabinyan, played by the incredible Israeli actress Neve Sultan, who goes deep undercover on a dangerous miss mission in Tehran that places her and pretty much every single human being she comes into contact with in dire jeopardy. But this show is so much more than a cat and mouse game. It's about family. It's about identity. It's about loyalty. It's about who you trust and who you're willing to fight for and what you're willing to fight for. I have told this cast so many times before, but they all owe me a lifetime of manicures because I bit off every nail watching it and I've watched the entire series through twice and my cuticles will never come back. That said, guys, the finale is out today. And if you have not watched it, we are going to talk about it. So I will repeat a spoiler alert many times because some of you guys don't want to be spoiled. We are talking about the finale. We are talking about what happens. We're talking about the final scene. We're talking about the future. We're talking about all of it. So that's your warning. It's intense. And we're going to we're going to get to the bottom of it. So I want to go ahead and get started by welcoming actress Neem Sultan, who stars as Tamar Rabinyan, Sean Tube as Faraz Kamali, Shervin Alanabi, who is Milad, and Daniel Serkin, co-creator and director. Welcome, all of you. Hello, everyone. Welcome from, from all over the world and, and time zones. Okay, Daniel, I want to start with you. I want to start with you getting involved in this series. And what was your thought process? Like, how did you come to this? And what did you want to accomplish with it? So, um, uh, my, uh, hi, Jessica. I'm so happy that you're such a fan of the show. It's amazing. <laughs> I got to start with that. Uh, the, the, for me, everything started when my friend uh, Moshe Zonda and my friend Shula and Dana, the producers, approached me with uh, this uh, you know, name, Tehran, and uh, I read the uh, first episode, um, and I just fell in love with it. I thought it's, uh, you know, it's amazing, and I was, uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, be able to sit with them in the writing room for the entire process of the rest of the series and develop it with them, which was just great. And, um, you know, just uh, taking this magical word Tehran, which doesn't mean much to people except what, for what they see in the news and, and using it as like this canvas as backdrop for this story about a young Mossad agent going back to her roots, to the place where she was born. It was so exciting and, uh, you know, I enjoyed every minute of it. And, and I think that while writing it, we felt that we have something special but not as uh, special as, uh, you know, until we, until we met our actors, then it really, really became super special for me. I, the, the every, it's, it's perfect casting all across the board. I was wondering if for, for the cast, for the three of you here, can you tell me about the first time you heard about the script or, or if you read it or if someone called you, an agent called you and said, listen, I got this role. I think, you know, this might be something you're into. And what was your reaction to it? 
Neve, let's start with you. All right. <laughs> so um, for me, the moment I got the audition, I just, I fell in love with Tamal. I just, I knew as an actress that this role was probably going to break my boundaries as an actress. And, uh, and then I read the script and I just, I was amazed <laughs> by the intensity of this story. And about, you know, this script was just ripping. I couldn't stop reading it. And I really love the fact that I'm reading it and I, I can't decide which side I'm supposed to choose. I mean, who's the bad guy, who's the good? I think that was one of the most um, unique things in this story and in this project. And, you know, I was, I got the audition. I was standing in my kitchen and thinking out loud, this role has to be mine. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. Sean, I mean, what, what Neve just said is is how I feel about your character so much. It's like, um, are, are you good? There's so, there, there's so much love. He has so much love in him. He has this, this compass in him that he's trying to figure out love of wife, love of country, being a human and protecting life. Was that something as you read the first or read the script or had your meeting that you thought, ah, oh, this is such a complex character? I'm just full of love. Yes. <laughs> no, you know, you know, it always, it always starts with the, with the words, you know. So when the, when the script came to me and, uh, you know, uh, Danny, uh, you know, uh, uh, basically uh, sent me an email and he says, you know, we are doing a project. And, uh, the, the, you know, when the, the, they sent me the first script, uh, it was... I was blown away right away, and uh, and then you know the the process. Of course, it took it took us a while, but uh, you know after I, I saw this, uh, you know read the second one, then the third one. It, it it's again it's it all starts with with uh, with the script, and uh, I am blessed to be part of this. Uh, you know, Faraz is uh, is a is a very complex character which I love. You know, I think as, 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 you know, for the audience, it's, it's more interesting uh, and uh, human to, to basically, you know, you, pe pe people, people see Faraz in a, in a different light all the time. And, uh, you know, he, he is a, a family man. He loves his uh, wife. And at the same time, he loves his country. And he's all about, you know, his work. And uh, he's an intelligent officer, and he's in, you know high up, and uh, and he's gonna get Tamar one of these days. <laughs> Not sure about that. <laughs> All right, Sherman. I I love Milad. I may be in love with Milad. A um, lot of people I mean, are. <laughs> I mean, hello. Can tell me about what what was it about this character that drew you to him? I think before everything else, the title drew me in the most. Um, Tehran. I was like, oh, okay. Um, when my agent rang me, and yeah, they. I, I don't think I got the scripts initially, but I had a lot of um, FaceTimes with Danny and Dana. And they were telling me what the show was about, and I was really like interested in it. And but the one thing that really drew me in the most was uh, that they're going to have a very heavy focus on the young people who are on, and this this commune um, situation. And uh, that's that's what really um, yeah really drew me to the role. Um, but also when I then I got the scripts, like Sean says, it was like, and we were getting it like we would. Um, I think it was like one at a time we were getting it. We wasn't getting it all at the same time. And it was just like, I was like, oh my God, it's just, I need the next one now. So that kind of was, um, yeah, the answer for me. How much did they tell you guys in those first meetings about like, hey, here's where this is going to end up? Or was it on a real like need to know basis as members of the intelligence? Well, actually, actually uh, you know, uh, Danny, even for, for while we were filming, he he was changing his mind about what was going to happen to Faraz. <laughs> and it was like, I don't know. I don't know, Sean. I don't know what's going to happen to him. I don't know. <laughs> so, you know, you, you know, Jessica, we, we wrote the show. I mean, Moshe and Oli and, uh, you know, with my help, uh, wrote the show. 
up, uh, until episode six, it was totally written, but we weren't quite sure how we want to end this. And we had a couple of, a couple of endings. And while we were shooting, Sean would come, would come to me, you know, uh, like in breakfast on set and say, so do I die? <laughs> and that's, I thought that's great. That's amazing to keep, to have this tension with an actor during breakfast on the set. I'm going to do it always. It's beautiful. But we actually, we didn't know. We actually didn't know. We, we only knew like a couple of weeks before how episode eight is going to end. And we, we, because we kept on rewriting it and rewriting it and we, kept postponing the last shooting days of episode eight to the very, very, and we shot it almost like on New Year's Eve, which was like wow. almost the last days of the shooting. So you had shot one through six and you were still sorting out how seven and eight would go? Something like that, something of the sort. We shot many, 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 many scenes from seven and eight, but the finale, the, I mean, like the really final sequence, we only shot at the end of the shooting when we were really, really, sure that it works and it was i, th I think it, i think it works oh it works it works i can tell i i can tell you that much wait what to, can you describe to me what the what was it like in like the writers as you were all debating because i'm sure there are some people who wanted it to end this way and some people who wanted to a completely other ending and i could see that so at that point, I was, I was exhausted after shooting days on my sofa in Athens. And, you know, the, the writers were in the room and I was oh, like that, you know, dead on the, on the sofa. But we still, yeah, we discussed, you know, there were many we could take it this way, that way. Uh, she can shoot for us. She can spare for us. She can shoot this character. She, what's, you know, if we, if, uh, you know, with God's help, we have a, God's help, we have a second season. What can we do with the characters? All kinds of uh, thoughts like this. And uh, eventually we made the, we, we made the cut. I think you made all the right choices, you, um, first you. of all. So tell me about, um, Daniel, you just mentioned Athens, and it's so incredible. I mean, I've, I've never been to Tehran, but I feel like I know what the city looks like and feels like and smells like. I mean, it's just, it's so incredible the way you recreate it. And I've even, I read an article about, you know, talking about people who, who live there or live there who are like, Every detail was so precise and specific, right down to like boxes on the street that people give charity to uh, for for less privileged, you know, citizens. And it was just tell me about recreating this city in Athens. So uh, you know, thank you. It was uh, we, you know the first thing to to really create a wonderful Tehran is to to get the best production designer you can. And when Joel Helsberg, our production designer. He's a really great artist. He just, uh, you know, he dove so. He, he just did this, an amazing research about uh, Tehran. We all did. We we mind watched a lot of movies, a lot of documentaries, whatever we could put our hands on. And then you all kind of mapped what really makes a city look, except for the architecture, which Athens really gives the the feeling of Tehran. Uh, you know, we built a lamppost that we just took straight out of the streets of Tehran. We had the little truck going with us and. Landing those lampposts wherever we shot, we had those little barriers and we had those uh, charity boxes. Of course, of course uh, we, we had to clear American cars, cars off streets because in Tehran they, they don't drive as many American cars, cars so it, it was, was predominantly European cars. cars. Um, and also, you know, I can tell you a really nice, funny story about it. Uh, we uh, recreated the original sign of the Tehran Electric Company. So you all really like took the original sign and he built it in full scale and we put it on a big, big building in, in Athens. And I speak a little Farsi. I learned some Farsi for the, for the, um, uh, for the show along with Niv. And I was sitting in my director's chair, kind of like hiding. And I see two Iranian refugees going on the street, just walking. Suddenly they see this movie set and then they see this sign. They see the street signs. And one tells the other, man, where are we? Are we in Tehran? Let's get away. Let's get out the hell out of here. <laughs> and it's like something I really saw. And I thought to myself, and they said it in Persian. I said, oh, it's perfect. Um, yeah, I, we need to hear more about those Farsi lessons, uh, Daniel, that you and Neve took. Like, tell me about how, um, and, and, and Sean and Sherman, you both speak Farsi, right? So I want to know what your review is if they had a good teacher. You know, to be honest with you, this is this is one of the uh, most amazing thing about this series is, you know, as an Iranian, I was uh, 
I was concerned, you know, because I was really concerned about the backlash and people are going to say, oh, my God, you know, uh, this doesn't even look like Tehran. And, and you know, people, you know, they're, they're, everybody is a critic. So, so I was really concerned about that. But I got to say, people have been amazed about the quality of the show, uh, the production value, and how... That, you know, these guys were able to get the essence of Tehran. It's amazing. Really, bravo. It, it, this is one of the things that uh, I get this, uh, you know, question all the time. That they're like, how did you do this? And they keep on asking me, did you go to Tehran? I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they ask us. I was like, did you did I mean, you they love how hosting Israeli productions. Yeah, so that was, the, uh, you know, and uh, yeah, it was, that, that was incredible. No, Sherwin? Oh, yeah, how, yeah, how's yeah, my yeah. Farsi? Sean, how's my Farsi? How, how, <laughs> how, would, how would you rate my Farsi? Uh, it was getting uh, really, really good. I don't know if you remember, uh, but... Uh, Daddy, do you remember season. something? <laughs> Man, dar Erzelia's in the game of course. Oh, yeah. Niamh, what do you remember? Man, dar Tel Aviv and Tel Aviv, bastam. All right, sir, hey, you hey, got you hey. got some applause from Sherman. How'd she do? Uh, how sorry, said that again? How did she do? You got you got some. She got some applause from oh, you. How was it? Like, oh my god! Like yeah, I think you blew everyone's mind. Um, when I was watching it with my parents and stuff, they were like, "I love how she matches her facial expressions with exactly what she says." <laughs> Um, <laughs> that, was, that was my mom's. That was my mom's feedback. <laughs> Love that. That's that's wonderful. I want to talk about the casting for a second because I think a show like this, there's so there's a lot going on. Obviously, it's a thriller. There's so many complexities, but so much of it rides on the incredible chemistry that that everyone has, whether it's romantic or political or antagonistic or friendship or family, it's just, there's so much going on. So I want to start uh, with the Shervin and Neve chemistry because like, I don't know how you say like fire in Hebrew or Farsi or, you know, anything, but like is good. So I want to, I mean, Neve and Shervin, tell me about when you first, um, met or realized you would be acting opposite each other. And Daniel, I'm curious for you, when you first saw the two of them in a scene together, were you like lighting a cigarette? (laughs) (laughs) I'll let the the actors speak first and then I'll I'll, I'll, I'll give you my perspective. I think the first time we met uh, with Neve, I'd already auditioned like maybe three times or twice. And then you said, oh, you should do a reading with Neve on Skype. And I remember very, very clearly that day, uh, we introduced ourselves to each other and then uh, we kind of went into the scene, I think about two, three lines in, I was like, this is good. And then we kind of went through the scene at the end and I just kind of paused at the end and I was like, I like you, I like you a lot. And I, th- and I think, <laughs> I think um, yeah, it was, uh, I was excited. I was really, really excited to work with you because I just loved her instinct and the perception she had of the um, of the script, and I felt like we had like similar similar instincts for the scenes we were in. So I think that's what really worked uh, for us. No. Oh, I have baby. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, just Did you feel it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The moment we just we already from the the uh, Zoom edition that we did when I was in Israel and he was in London and we were in the room, me and Danny and Dana, the producer, just after two minutes, it was, it was like, all right, here's Milad. No other choice. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, and Daniel, was it pretty clear when you saw them together? Oh yes. Oh yes. Uh, we saw Shervin. We were looking for Milad for a long time. Then we saw this incredibly handsome young man. And then the audition, and I, you know, I and you cast him as Faraz. Exactly. Oh, no, Faraz is beyond <laughs> handsome. It's something uh, divine. <laughs> I was actually, I was actually auditioning for Sherman's role, and uh, they said no. 
So, you know, so we saw, we saw, and then when one, once he acted, I thought to myself, this guy really, he really can act. He, he should get rid of his British accent though. But, but <laughs> a part of that, he's perfect. Uh, and then we matched them and it was, it was a time where COVID did not dominate our lives and people yeah. did not really know yeah. what the video chat is. It was a prehistorical times. And yet we managed to put the two of them on the same screen and just looking at the two of them together, it was such a beautiful frame. And then Dana and I, the producer, we left the room for a couple of minutes and then we came back and they might as well be, uh, been like we were smoking the cigarette because they were just like, uh, <laughs> it was a love affair. It was, it was, you know, it was there, it was there and it was clear, you know. Well, the chemistry is incredible. I, I have to say that the chemistry different, but also uh, uh, between Sean, between you and Neve, between Faraz and, and Tamar is there's so much tension, and, and we're going to talk about the finale, everyone. Warning, spoiler alert. I want to talk about just, I, I mean, you don't act too much opposite each other f it, throughout the series, but when you do, oh my gosh, it is, it's so incredibly tense. Did you, I'm curious, Sean, if you thought, okay, I need to kind of stay away from Neve so that there's no warmth between us when we are, when the cameras are rolling and we're on screen together? You know, I'm, I'm one of those uh, crazy ones because I am, I'm able to, to basically uh, switch off. Uh, so when I'm on the set, uh, you know, for some reason, uh, I've, I've had this gift uh, that when they call action, I, I completely switch and I go into the, the, the character and uh, I am totally uh, able to, you know, uh, be normal as, as such. So, um, yeah, so this, um, uh, you know, the tension between us, it's, it's, uh, real, uh, you know, on, on screen, as you can tell. And it's, uh, again, uh, you know, the, 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 it's all uh, about um, what the director does. And, uh, you know, Danny has been able to really uh, spice up uh, the attention. And uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's, it's fun. It's fun because we were never really together per se. And that's why I think the audience uh, are, are waiting and, and for the moment. So that, that makes it fun. For sure. Neve, how, what was it like to get to finally act opposite? So, you know, he's, the, 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 the character Faraz is such a huge part and yet you don't have so many scenes with him. So to finally the scenes you did get to do together, what was that like? It was amazing. Listen, Sean is just really, he's an amazing actor. And Thank you. the moment I heard I'm going to work with him, I almost, I don't know, <laughs> passed away. <laughs> and he was super professional and we had an amazing chemistry. And as he said, it wasn't like uh, off camera, it wasn't like bad tension between us. It was all friendly. And on action, we just switched. I, I, I have to put them in different corners, like in a boxing ring, and then with a the towel. <laughs> I went with the towel. But then they, they clashed. Uh, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. You know, I, 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 if, if I might say, may say, say something about Sean. So when I first spoke to Sean, he asked me, so how are you guys shooting it? Are you doing it an episode? <laughs> I told him, no, 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 no. We're doing it differently. We're doing it the uh, Israeli style. We're shooting the whole thing. I said, really you're doing the whole yeah. thing? And, and I said, yeah, yeah, that's how it is. But it's going to be fine. And it was, it was, you were quite, quite nervous about it, weren't you, Sean? I was. You know, the, I, I, it, it's, it's, you know, being a Hollywood actor, you know, we, what we do is we go from one episode to another and then you find the character and then you develop the character and you go on and you never know, you know, where you're going to end up. So you don't, you have, you have the you know, the, the, the time to go and, and, you know, find and, and find that moment and what the character is about. And so, so, uh, Danny came from Israel and, you know, we, we were, we were talking about this for, for a while and, uh, and, and thank God that Danny was, 
was the one who was pushing and and you know he said you're you're the only one you know you, you have to take the role so he came to he came to uh, Los Angeles to have dinner and so we we were talking and then he goes yeah Sean I well, I want to tell you something uh, I go yeah what is it he goes hey, you know uh, I know you're used to uh, the you know the episodics that you do but this is not going to be uh, the way we do we shoot it I'm like what are you talking about he goes you know sometimes uh, in the morning we are doing episode two and then in the you're going to change and do episode seven I'm like what <laughs> so he goes he goes you have to be ready you know you have to really know where the character is going to go and it was a challenge but it was really fun though I mean it was it was definitely a challenge for me uh, because it r- literally was that, yeah, it really was like like that. That you you do episode two and then you change and you're all of a sudden in episode eight. So um, I was gonna say you rewrite an entire scene two three hours before you shoot it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but yeah. but you know, so, but because Sean, because Sean was so you know, um, he was so nervous about it. I thought that he's going to be really very delicate. And uh, the first few days, we were very, very polite with him because he came from Hollywood and we had a special chair for him with his name. And after like three days, the chair was kicked to the rubbish and we understood he's one of us. And you know, at at the end, and like in this last episode, this last episode, Sean really, you know, he comes to work. That's what I love about this guy. Uh, He threw himself against the wall like 25 times until we had the, the right shot with his back, with his head. Every time, and I thought to myself, oh, you know, those guys in America, they, they know how to work, you know, they're good. Yeah, even without even without a chair, that's that's impressive. Um, I, I think what it, it's interesting to me that you say that you had to have these moments of of all of a sudden being, you know, finding the emotional space of where your character is, because as a viewer, there are you're at times watching these characters figure go from being one or in one frame of mind to completely different. And I want to throw to our first clip, which is a moment when Tamar and Milad are together and she's almost exposed. One of many times where like my heart's skipping a beat because she is almost exposed. So let's play that clip and then we can talk about it. رئیسش کشته شده و شوهرش هم خودکشی کرده ولی کس خل جیلا قربانی فر این نیست Okay, so um, Neve and Shervin, tell me about that. I mean, Neve, that's like you're going from one, you're going from playing a person, playing a person to then trying to be who you really are while not completely alienating this person you have feelings for. That's a lot to unpack. I have to say something about that scene. That was my nightmare scene. I was really scared of everything in that scene. I wa- I wanted everything to look really authentic. And I was scared of that little, you know, choreography dance I had with Mo, who portrayed uh, Karim. And oh then pulling God. the gun out and holding the gun and everything. I was so nervous and so stressed. And Danny always on set, he keep on telling me, Niv, trust me, everything is going to be okay. Trust me, it's going to be okay. And then, when I first saw that scene on screen, I was like, what? (laughs) Who are you? I mean, was that me? And then I remembered, it wasn't me, it was Danny. (laughs) He told me to trust him. So Danny, you and Giora, the photographer, you did an amazing job. And now that's one of my favorite scenes, I have to say. Um, What are we without you? What are we? We're just... Just behind the camera, we have to shoot you guys. We want to see you. No, you did the magic. You did the magic. I mean, Shervin, I'm curious how you balance this. You know, there are times where I'm sure you were like, 
Milad, like, how do you, why are you questioning more? Why do you, why are you trusting this person? Or, I mean, how did you, you know, kind of approach the, who he was as far as trusting this person um, versus just sort of like being like in love? I think that probably goes back to um, the research. Um, I think young people in Iran, especially those that have this, you know, uh, underground life, uh, they really depend on each other to get their things done. Um, so it's kind of it's kind of like a culture over there. They um, they don't exist without each other. Um, and I think it was the same for Milad, you know, um, there was a girl in trouble and his first instinct is to help her. And obviously they've been talking for months uh, on the dark web and, um, uh, and he clearly finds her very attractive as well. So that helped a lot probably. Um, didn't question, didn't, he should have questioned it more, um, but he kind of just let it slip. Um, uh, but yeah, um, I just wanted to go back on that um, scene that we did in episode six, which is actually one of my favorite scenes as well. I was also like very worried about that scene. I think that was like the first time I actually said, uh, Danny, can I just chat to you for a second? <laughs> so we went on the rooftop. I was like, I, I don't like, uh, help me in it. Help me. What's going on? Because um, everything switches uh, from there on. And I remember Neve did it so well. Like, I remember, like, she was like, oh, I don't know if I'm doing well. I was like, no, 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 trust me, it is working. Like, she managed to, like, switch uh, to this completely different identity, but sort of have her roots still planted there in a way. I, I was just like, I was blown away, yeah, by, by what she did. Um, it was a great job, amazing work. <laughs> I mean, Daniel, do you remember directing that scene? It's, I mean, I... I love that, that that was such an important scene for both of you um, mm. it, because it's incredible to watch and they're, they're, it, it is real, you know, they're real like 180 degree turns that, that, that happen. And you're right, Sherman, I think everything does change a little bit. After yeah. That. Yes, it's true. It's, I think at the end of the scene, the, our, our protagonist is really, is really born as a Mossad agent. Uh, for her, it's a big change and uh, you've seen even totally different colors. And, she, and the, the Milad character sees, us, sees her in totally different colors. And it was for us, just technically, it was, a, it was a, a special day. We shot this scene for an entire day, which is something that we usually don't do. So uh, we had the time because we realized that everybody is a bit nervous about it. So we took our time there. Uh, and eventually the actors did such a great job that, you know, we just had to place the camera. I want I want to play another clip now, which is uh, one, of, one of my favorite scenes as well. With it's with Sean um, and Faraz has kidnapped uh, Tamar's father, and he's he's holding him hostage. And it's a a, a conversation. It's you know a conversation that that they're having. Let's play the clip, and then I have questions. Hello. You shouldn't have done that. This is the only language you people understand. Faraz, we're giving your wife the best medical care she can get. We've no interest in hurting her. We were going to release her in the next few days. I don't believe you. You kidnapped my wife. Let me talk to her. I'm afraid that's not possible right now. Why not? Something happened to her. Nothing's happened to her. She's getting tests done. And when she stabilizes, we'll contact you. In the meantime, I'd like to talk to you about the terms of her release. The terms are clear. If my wife doesn't land in Istanbul by midnight, I will execute Mordechai. Please control your emotions. You have till midnight. Do not test me. Okay, Sean, first of all, I, that, I mean, it's, 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 almost poetic how this um that scene will then be echoed in the finale um and which i thought was such beautiful writing and directing but tell me about filming that scene which was very intense and again with someone who you're not acting with that much this was a moment that this is one actually one of my favorite uh, moments because i i like to see how faraz changes when he all of a sudden becomes a professional again, you know, because you see him with his wife, he's, you know, he's sweet, 
But when he turns, he becomes an absolute professional. And you know that there is also a, one of my favorite scenes. Danny is the is the one where when we go in the commune, when uh, Faraz changes completely, he's he's the leader. Uh, yeah. yeah, my and, mom and, loves that too. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, you know because he uh, all of a sudden is Faraz and the way he walks, and all of a sudden he completely changes his demeanor, the way he walks. He's this is older man, and and he wants his, you know, he's looking for. He's his just looking for his daughter. Daughter, yeah. So that's one of my favorites, and that the scene in. in and then it, I would say, well, I would add one thing to that, which I also loved about that, which is that he's this man, and like you said, he's he's even how he carries himself is different. But then once he's in the room and he sees what's written on the piece of paper, how he goes back into being who he is and manages to get it. So it's just, it's this constant juggling of personas. Yeah, he, he, I, I wanted to make sure that there is a switch on that scene. You know, I, we, we talked about Danny, I said, I really want him to, to take, it off, take off his jacket, like he went in the car and put a sweater on. And I wanted him to be completely different, so they are they are, they are not surprised by it. So and and there are moments about that's why I love the the character of Faraz is because he's so complex, you know, and there is so many colors of uh, on him. And and when he goes in the hotel with Mordechai, you know, when he opens the door, it's like shalom, you know, he's like a, he's like so friendly, so nice. And then when you shut the door. You can see his. You can totally see his 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 switch up, and 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 you you see that uh, that all of a sudden you see Faraz again at that moment, which is which which is scary of what what is going to happen to Mordechai. So that was that was that was fun. You know, I think this scene, Jessica, of uh, Mordechai and Faraz in the room, I think it's really one of the best uh, written scenes by Moshe and Omri, our writers. Uh, and it deals uh, really with the heart of the series, the whole thing of identity and immigration, <laughs> which is uh, personally for me being a son of an immigrant. And I think you know all of the, all of us are children of immigrants, um, and, it, and there's something in, in it that uh, touches uh, you know our souls upon us. And I think that's one of the things that really can <laughs> talk to millions all over the world. So you know the fact that this Jew, this Persian Jew. Is there with the man from the Revolutionary Guard, and they can discuss their sort of mutual motherland, uh, and in so different perspectives, and yet you feel that they share the love to the same place. I think that's amazing. That's great writing, and and you know all, all Sean had to do is just stand there and uh, you know be be you know attentive, and uh, you know Alex, the the guy who plays Neves. Father, actually, they didn't, they didn't have a single scene together. They, they never met, uh, and yet you feel, that, and yet you feel such a connection. He is a guy. He's an actor, but he, you know, he didn't speak Farsi for many years, and he was really struggling with Farsi. He did, he did the, the job eventually, and uh, but you know, it's very moving. What comes out of it? It's yeah. incredibly moving, and I and I think there's another scene in the, in the finale with with, with Milad when. Um, the another member of, of Tamar's team when he says, "I'm not doing this to be with the Israelis. I'm doing this because I don't like what's going on in Iran right now." And 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 that's something the the complexity of of loyalty and family and who you protect and what you protect um, is is certainly a theme that runs through the series. Um, Daniel, can you talk a little bit about that, about not wanting it to be so like, this is, this is the good person. And Neve, you mentioned that too, that you did at times you didn't know who you, who to root for. This is who's good and this is who's bad, but really, you know, and uh, just wanting it to have a real gray area. So I, I, I need to tell you that uh, my conversations with Mr. Shelvin and Mr. Sean, uh, were uh, very instrumental in this. Uh, I mean, of course, uh, you know, we thought about it and it's part of Moshe's uh, great talent and uh, ability to be able to see the other side too. Uh, and it was there, it was, it was the DNA of the, of the series. But when I spoke to Sean, first thing he told me, <clears throat> listen, I'm Jewish, but I love Iran. 
and you cannot portray Iran or the Iranian people in a bad light. You have to respect Iran and Iranians. I love Iran. Iranians love me, and do a good job, you know. And uh, and then I and then I met Shervin, um, and Shervin, we flew him all the way. After this beautiful uh, audition, we had the Zoom audition. We flew him from London to Athens. His flight was delayed. The poor guy, <clears throat> and we met him in the little kitchenette of the production company in Athens, and we had one hour with him. And in this one hour, basically said the same. I said, listen, I'm going to do the show, even though some people are telling me not to, but I want to do the show because I think it respects Iran. It respects, it respects who I am. And uh, please excuse, excuse me, guys, that for telling it in, on your behalf. But uh, for me, no, it's true. you know, hearing this from these two really fine actors and fine gentlemen uh, was just uh, like a call for me to understand that we have to do a really, really good job and really respect both sides. And uh, that there are people in Iran watching us that will be watching us, and uh, you know, uh, and that's what we did. Tried to. No, you know, you did you, because I, I got you know I remember that conversation because when we, we when we talked, I asked I asked Danny. I said, Danny, I just ask you for one thing. If you want me to do this, uh, if, uh, do this series, I would love to, but but I cannot make the Iranians look bad uh, because I'm still Iranian. And and you know what this is this is why this is why this this show has resonated with people because it's such a balanced show, you know it doesn't really take sides it's just it, it, there there's a story of of humans uh, and people and the struggles of life and I think that is that is the that is the beauty of this series and Danny again you did a masterful job I mean bravo. How about Shervin? Do you remember that talk? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I remember that talk. Um, it was a. I, I think th th this this series was probably the biggest decision I've ever taken in my entire life, and along the journey of deciding to do it, like I, I guess some signs were you know on, on that journey. Um, I, I had that, I had that conversation with Danny, and I said, look. Obviously, if I do this project, that's it for me, Iran. You know, I'm really attached to Iran. And I think about my family all the time and there are people waiting for me over there. But in a weird way, I sort of, my own life became kind of parallel with what this show tries to tell the story. This show tries to tell, you know, the love of family, the love of country and your own personal ambition. Um, uh, so they were all like really, really uh, playing uh, in my head. And uh, and yeah, you, once we once I talked to Danny, uh, I trusted him, and I saw the scripts, and I said, okay, cool, this is this is uh, very different because obviously the first time you get told, oh, there's a show called Tehran, uh, this Israeli production company is doing it, you're like, hmm, uh, you know, <laughs> so you're like, let me read the script. <laughs> um, <laughs> so and then we read the script. I was like, wow, okay, um, we're we're really doing something different here, and we're really taking our power back um, from what we see on the news and just politics in general and, um, and yeah, uh, writing our own stories, writing our own narratives, yeah. It, it, I think it made it feel also very, the show very relevant to right now. And I know it's, it was already wrapped b before COVID and everything, but there was something that felt as I was watching it very timely, just about questioning questioning where you're getting your information from and really being able to distill what is what is truth and what do you stand for, which maybe are, are timeless things anyway. But for me, it, it really, that very much spoke to me. Exactly. Exactly. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Well, I, I think that uh, maybe Nif can talk about it a little bit too, but I think that once we stepped into our Persian teacher's uh, apartment in Omad Gan, we understood that we don't know much about Iran. That all we know about Iran is probably false. Yeah, I just, I can, I just can say that for me, this whole experience, it, it really, it started out just as a huge achievement for my career. You know, lead role in and in international production, and it was like very, very, you know, uh, very personal from on that side. But then it quickly became much more than this. I mean, much more than a TV show and much more than work or, or something for my career. Thanks to the fact that I got to work from um, 
so close with these guys, with these Iranian guys, and to hear, I mean, as an Israeli actress, and to hear their stories and to feel their homesickness and their love and commitment that they have to their country and to their culture, it really got me into it. And at the end, I almost felt like, really like one of them. So for me, it became just as an amazing uh, experience. I, I, I love that. Um, all right, I'm going to just put a big old spoiler alert on the on the the next the rest of the conversation because we're talking about the finale. Um, let's okay. So first of all, Neve, what is harder to do to act with a bandage on your nose, pretending you had a nose job, or to have a full beard? That we got with a full uh, beard. Uh, we even we even uh, had a name for Neve with that full beard. <laughs> Halil Jabbar. <laughs> Halil Jabbar, that's true. It, it was really good <laughs> though. The ugliest man alive. I'm the ugliest <laughs> man alive. <laughs> nah, I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one though. <laughs> just, just, yeah. You, you, okay. you look pretty, you, you look, you look, you, yeah. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Stick to how you are now. Um, so tell me about, so, you know, since you did not know, as, as we found out a little while ago, you did not know how things were going to end. Once you all, the, the three, I, the three of you found out where things were headed and you read that final script, what did you think? I mean, Sean, I know you were like, whew, I don't die. <laughs> No, you know, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm never, I'm never really, uh, attached to, uh, to, uh, being, you know, killed off the show or anything because, you know, I, whatever, whatever it is good for the show, I'm okay with that. And sometimes you, you feel like, uh, that should be the end of the journey of this character. And if you prolong it and then it's not going to be really great. So I'm, I'm totally good with that. It's just that I, it's just as an actor, you know, because the reason I wanted to know and where are we going to go, because I still had plans about, you know, of us, about how, how I'm going to uh, interact with, with this character, you know? So that is, that is, that is what I wanted to, to wanted to know. And, and, so, and I think till the last week we didn't, we didn't know what was, what was going to happen. So, uh, but, but Sean, it listen, was, yeah. if you don't, if you don't care, we can still kill you in season two. It's, it's if we have a season two, if we have a I'm season okay. two, no problem. Just tell me, just okay. tell me. Uh, uh, listen, if it's for the character, I'm, to, I'm totally good with that. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm curious, Daniel, what was the moment like where it was like, okay, we've gone back and forth on possible outcomes, on possible finales. What was the moment of, yes, we've got it. This is how it has to be. I can't tell you ex the exact moment, but I really need to tell you that we really loved Sean so much that we said we can't possibly kill this character, <laughs> which is, I would say it's a good, it's a good reason. It's a good dramatical reason. <laughs> it is, it is. And uh, we thought it's just, you know, He's the nemesis and the chemistry between Eve and uh, the Tamar and, and, and Faraz is so great that we can't afford, we can't afford, uh, there's more, if we have a second season, it's, there's more to, to extract out of this. I want to play a clip from the season finale because there was that moment that uh, we knew Faraz maybe wasn't going to die, but it certainly looked like Milad might if he did not cooperate with the Mossad. So let's play a clip of a conversation with Tamar and Milad figuring out how to get get out of this situation. Either way, it seems impossible to me. Why? Only the highest ranking techs were exposed to military projects. And God knows what defense systems they have set up there. I was never exposed to those things. Let's try. I'll help you. It's got nothing to do with that. So what? I should tell them you can't do it. Because if this is where we are, it's the end.
I can try to put the fingerprints into the system through the computer or the commune. Um, Neven Sherman, one of the things that I found so beautiful and compelling was that these two people, in some ways, they want to be together, they need to be apart, and yet they can't, as angry as Milad is, he still can't help himself but to help her. Tell me about that push and pull. Gosh, I wish I could. <laughs> it was probably something I, I couldn't quite understand either, uh, but for some reason he made complete sense. Um, I, I guess for Mila, did he just, obviously even after finding out who she is, he just saw her in a different way. Like he saw the real her, uh, I guess, and I think that's what the what was responsible for the pull. Wouldn't you say, Neve? I think? Yeah, I guess that, you know, until now, I love the fact that I try to stress, to, 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 to be, to keep on the, the light stress um, when you really can't tell either she's using him or really in mm. love with him. Mm. And then that <laughs> happened. And she, like, obviously cares about him and feel bad mm. and wants to, want to help him. Uh, Exactly, exactly, yeah. It was a really, really nice detail of the show. Tell me about this. I also thought when, once they're, they're inside the, the, the base and, 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 and uh, Tamar gives him back this piece of jewelry, this meaningful thing, even to, like I have goosebumps just thinking about that moment. It's, it's such a heartbreaking moment. And, you know, I, I, I'm going to butcher the quote, but I think she says something like, I, I hope you, you don't remember me as the worst thing that's, that that ever happened to you and and it's it's just a devastating line tell me how you were playing that scene because here tamar she is on a mission she's got to get something done and then she's also trying to save someone's life who maybe everyone on on her side possibly wants dead I think that's the beauty of Tamar and that's the beauty of the story because yes, she is a Mossad agent, a badass during her huge mission. But at the end, we're talking about a young, vulnerable woman all alone under enemy lines, uh, dealing for the first time of her life with her double identity. And then just out of nowhere, this handsome, sick boy comes into her life. And I think that I think that Milad is taking out of uh, Tamal things that she buried deeply inside of her a long time ago. Mm. And this amazing relationship starts. And then, as I said, this gentle line between uh, using him or really in love, falling in love with him. But at the end, I don't think she could ever live with herself uh, while thinking that her mom, his mom's uh, bracelet uh, mm. is still with, with her. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know this is whatever this 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 is what the beauty of this excuse me uh, this is the beauty of this uh, this uh, series is it's just these moments are so precious, you know there are so many moments and and uh, and that, that are just just beautiful I, I I love that I love that scene the the about the bracelet it's a it's a beautiful scene yeah and it wasn't so surprisingly it wasn't like hard to do that scene was it it was like we knew exactly what was going on we were kind of like leaning on each other and like even yeah, though i had a mustache yeah even though you had a mustache yeah so i wasn't yes. too upset saying, but, <laughs> but yeah yeah, yeah. It they, was, were, um, they were the, the two of them were just perfect they came in so ready and really for me as a director there was really nothing to do there just really let them give their performance and i was also nervous like me if uh, will will it look strange and awkward if she's like dressed say, with the mustache and it's like a love scene where she's basically like in drag and uh and but but uh it works beautifully and uh it's, it's, it's it, it did it did and um you know she lifts her head she has this little baseball cap this Iranian baseball cap she lifts her eyes and you see your beautiful eyes and you see a beautiful Milad and it just works. Yeah. yeah. Tell me about the decision uh, to make Kadosh um, 
a trait. I mean, a, 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 a kind of double agent. And um, and I said, spoiler alert. I said, I mean, was that something that was already that was always the plan, or was that one of those last minute decisions? that you made because that reveal, even though I had, when I watched the, the episode another time, even though I knew where it was headed, when she's hold, pulled the, pulls the gun on Tamar, I jump every time I see it. Uh, this was one of the first thing, things we did together in the writer's room uh, once I stepped in because uh, Omri, the writer asked us, you know, what's, what's the thing with Kadosh? What's the thing with this character? And we thought about it, and then we realized pretty early that uh, you have to have, you know, a part of the show being balanced is uh, you never think that you uh, might have Iranian spies or that your intelligence might be infiltrated. If you do, you know, if you do the Israeli series about Iran, you're the strong and you're the best and you infiltrate Iran. But when, then we thought, you know, it might be, must be vice versa too. I mean, if we're talking about um, uh, balance, this is a part of the balance. That, uh, that the Mossad is not the only one, the one who works. Uh, so, yeah, we have Kadosh. And then once we knew Kadosh is this uh, double agent, I can't believe that I'm saying it out loud. I, I know, don't say it. <laughs> I know, uh, don't say it. I hate but it that you guys are saying it. <laughs> uh, well, but she, they said we can, that you know, so in Apple we trust. So, you know, so, uh, <laughs> so uh, we, we, once we decided that it makes a lot of sense to everything in the story. And also it, ma it, made, it made us, um, it gave us the possibility to let Faraz be the only one on her track. Because if you really think about it, he wouldn't be the only one uh, in a, such a situation. He and he's so isolated, in, and actually, he's the only one in man and the man in Iran who does the work. Because his uh, this really was one of the first things, <laughs> things so, uh, we did together. In the so that's a part room, of the story. Uh, and uh, this, once um, I stepped in, because so uh, the only writer asked us, you know, an what's, an early decision. what's the thing with Kado? You know, what's and it also, of course, character? echoes and, and, and goes to so many of the relationships and the just the, the ways that, that have, people's lives are you know, intertwined. Here part she of had the this love. Balance uh, you know, Tamar's Tamar's aunt had you know had had this other life, and they're they're just these all of the characters. It's not like you you are you fall here or you fall here. There's so much overlap and intertwining along the, best, the way with so many of the characters. But when, then we thought, you know, it might be, must be vice versa too. I mean, if yeah. we're talking about um, uh, balance, this is a part of the balance. That, uh, that the Mossad is not the only one, the one who works. Uh, so, yeah, we have Kadosh. And then once we knew Kadosh is this uh, double agent, I can't believe that I'm saying it out loud. It's such a spoiler. But, twist, but to do actually have a double twist this is amazing and 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 please don't don't spoil anything for anybody <laughs> i'm really concerned about i'm really concerned about people well you know not knowing because i think it i think that the 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 last episode is is magnificent i think it's yeah. it's great uh, i think i forgot about like major details about the last episode so when i actually saw it i was like wait what <laughs> yeah <laughs> I yeah, was like, yeah. That, um, that's exactly how we, how we all felt because we, literally, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what the hell? And I think at the last episode, you realized, whoa, like this story is kind of only just beginning in a way. Like, um, and yeah, really, I really hope the show like goes on for a few seasons because I think it, like Iran is like very beautifully complex country, and we have an opportunity to like really go into it and like expose it further. Um, so I'm excited, hopefully. Yeah, and I also, I, one of my favorite scenes also is w with, uh, with Tamar and Faraz when she has a gun pulled on him. And like I said earlier, it's an echo of a, a previous scene. And I thought that was just such an incredible moment of when, when do we let our humanity come in? When do, how do we make certain decisions? How was it filming? Tell me about that scene. I mean, as an actor, it was, I, I love that scene because it's almost a payback, you know, but, but the humanity really, uh, 
uh, comes out, you know, uh, and and Tamar and Faraz at that moment, and also, you know, with uh, uh, and the hotel, you know, there's there's a moment that you see these two characters become human, even though they are complete opposites, you know, and he's Israeli, of course, he's Iranian, but by being by being Iranian, uh, you know. Uh, uh, it just, it just, it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful writing. It's beautiful direction, and and uh, it is. It, I love that. Well, I, I mean, a, a perfect place to end. I think what the, that final moment. It was like I, you know, I think I speak on behalf of all of the the viewers as you watch that that motorcycle pull away, and then you see that you're at the end of the hour. It's like. I just want a few more minutes. Mm-hmm. And it's it's an incredible uh, season. I really hope there's a season two. Um, I hope we didn't spoil too much for people. Tehran on, on Apple TV Plus, over 100 countries. So congratulations to all of you. And I want to thank all of you, Daniel, Sean, Shervin, and Neve, for joining me today. This was <laughs> such a treat to get to talk to you all. Thank Pleasure. You. Thank you thank so you. much. Pleasure. Thank you. 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 Th